Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the constant acceleration equations which are normally called SUVATs. And so in this video we're going to be talking about what SUVAT stands for, the equations you can get from them, and then I'll be answering some exam questions. So I'll timestamp each part of the video below, so if you just want to look at the exam questions or one part of the video you can skip through to that. And so we'll start off with what does the SUVAT stand for, okay? And so S is our displacement. Now displacement is measured in meters and it's the difference between where you started and where you finished, okay? It's not necessarily your total distance traveled, it's just the difference between where you started and finished. And displacement is measured as a vector quantity and all that means is it has a size, okay? So a distance in meters as well as a direction. We have u which is our initial velocity, okay? And that's measured in meters per second. And the initial velocity is how fast you're traveling as well as a direction okay so that is also a vector quantity it's not just speed speed is uh, a scalar meaning it's just a number but if we're talking about velocity we're talking about a direction we're going in as well so that's why it's a vector quantity final velocity also in meters per second that's the speed you're traveling at the end so a question might say you started cycling at four meters per second and when you got to a certain point you were traveling i don't know 10 meters per second so that would be a start and a final velocity Acceleration, uh, that's measured in meters per second per second or meters per second squared. And this is also a vector quantity, okay? So you've got a size to it, how fast you're accelerating, and also the direction of acceleration. Uh, and obviously, based on the title of the video, that has to be a constant for the equations we're now going to look at to work. And finally, we have time, which is measured in seconds, and that is a scalar. Yeah, it's not a vector, it doesn't have a direction, it's just the time. So let's take a look at the five equations. Now you are given these, uh, but sometimes in questions it could ask you to um, derive them and I'll be doing that in my next video. So we've got V which is our uh, final velocity which is equal to U plus AT, so initial velocity plus your acceleration times your time. We've got displacement is equal to, or I'll read them out, S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. S is equal to one half U plus V all multiplied by T. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS and S is equal to VT minus half AT squared, just in case you can read. So that's that's what the five uh, uh, SUVATs are that you will be given, but it's also good to remember them and the more you practice, you probably will remember them. So let's take a look at some exam questions. I've got a few written down uh, and I'll work through them all, so hopefully you'll get a good understanding of how these work. So <clears throat> a car travels along a road. It passes uh, two speed cameras, A and B, which are 250 meters apart. Now with these questions, it can be useful to draw a diagram. So I will draw one here. So we could have speed camera A and say speed camera B. And it says the distance between them is 250 meters. It, um, <clears throat> so a car passes A at 20 meters per second. So that's our initial velocity. Okay, so I could say U is equal to 20 meters per second and it passes B at 25 meters per second. So that's gonna be its final velocity. So we know that V is equal to 25 meters per second. We need to calculate its acceleration. So we don't know what A is, that's what we need to find out. And we know the displacement is 250 meters because it went from A, it drove all the way to B, which is 250 meters. So we have that S is equal to 250 meters. So now we just need to look for our list of SUVAT equations, which I've got written over here, and find one that has S, U, V, and A in it. So we don't really care about any that contain T. And so if I take a look through, I know that I could use this one here. So we could use that V squared is equal to U squared plus 2 times A times S. And now it's just a case of substituting in the values to calculate A. Okay. So we have V, v is 25, so we've got 25 squared is equal to U, U squared, so 20 squared plus two multiplied by A, which we don't know, multiplied by S, which is 250, okay? Now it's just a case of rearranging that, so I'm gonna do 25 squared, subtract 20 squared, okay? So I've got 225 is equal to, well, two times 250 is 500, so 500 A, and so dividing both sides by 500, we get that our value of A is equal to so two decimal places, 0 0.45. And remember that acceleration is meters per second per second. So it's gonna be meters per second squared. <clears throat> Pretty easy, right? Let's take a look at the second exam question. And it says, a tennis ball is dropped out of a window, 12 meters high. It moves freely under gravity, and I'll talk about what this means in a second, uh, until it reaches the ground. 
How long does it take to hit the floor? So we're going to make some assumptions here. We're going to assume that someone's just holding it out of the window and letting go like that. They're not chucking it down. Okay. And so what that means is that its initial velocity is going to be zero because it's just at standstill dropped. So its initial velocity U is zero. Okay. Now we know that the window is 12 meters high. So we want to know the difference from 12 meters up until it hits the floor. So that's going to be mean that its displacement is 12 meters. Okay, now a key part of the question, it moves freely under gravity. So when you drop something, usually it's gonna speed up until it hits its terminal velocity, okay? And the reason that it's, well, I don't do physics, but the reason that it's getting faster is because gravity is pulling it down, right? And so in maths, we use gravity for the acceleration because that's what's pulling it down. And in a question like this one here, it says, assume gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning that our acceleration is going to be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, always use 9.8 unless a question gives you uh, a different value to use, okay? And so we need to know how long does it take to hit the floor? Well, that means we're looking for a time, so t. So now we're looking, we don't really care what its final velocity was. So we're going to look through our list of SUVAT equations until we find one that has us, a, and t. So one that doesn't have a v in it, basically. And we could use, say, this one here, s equals ut plus half a t squared, one half a t squared. So now it's just a case of, again, substituting what we know in. So we've got 12 is equal to, well, u times t, so zero times t, that's just zero, plus one half times a, which is 9.8, multiplied by t squared. So now I'm just going to rearrange this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two and then divide by 9.8. And if we do that, we get that t squared is equal to, I'll give it to two decimal places, 2.45, okay, seconds, well, t squared. So we need to now square root this to calculate t. And it, when we work that out, we get that t is equal to 1.56 seconds to two decimal places, okay? So that's how we would calculate that question there. Again, not too difficult. Okay, let's look at this third question. And it says a ball is kicked upwards at four meters per second, okay? Initial velocity, probably. Uh, from a point one meter above the ground. Okay, so with stuff like this, I always draw a picture because it just really does help sometimes. So say this is the ball, we are one meter above the ground, so it's right, one meter. And someone kicks it directly upwards, okay, at four meters per second. So we need to know how long did it take for the ball to reach its maximum height? Now, this is quite a common question, okay? And it's not too difficult to work out. So there's a few things that we need to think about though, because this is slightly different to the previous one. So the ball's been kicked upwards, okay? And so that means that I'm gonna take the upwards direction to be positive, okay? So that means that my initial velocity is four meters per second, okay? It's been kicked upwards at four meters per second, so up is positive. Now, when the ball reaches its terminal velocity, if you chuck something up, it kind of slows down and then it drops back, okay? And so at the point where it reaches its maximum height, its velocity is going to be zero because it's changing from going up to stopping to then coming back down, meaning that its maximum height, its velocity is going to be equal to zero, okay? How long does it take? Well, we need to work out t, okay? And here's the bit which some people find confusing. I've taken upwards to be positive, okay? Gravity is acting against that. Gravity is acting downwards. I kicked it upwards. So when I calculate or my ex put my acceleration in, it's going to be 9.8 meters per second, okay, squared. But because it's going down I, and I'm taking up to be positive, I'm going to write negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Hopefully that makes sense. And so from here, it's just a case of, again, picking my SUVAT. So I've got A, U, V, and T. So I don't care about S. So I could use V equals U plus A, T. So V equals U plus AT. And so now substituting everything in, we get zero is equal to four minus 9.8 T. Rearranging that, we get four divided by 9.8. And that gives me an answer of T equal to, to let's do it to two decimal places, 0 0.41 seconds. So that's how long it takes to reach its maximum height. Part B says, how fast will the ball be traveling when it hits the ground? Okay, so let's think about how we can answer this one. Okay, so with this part, we've already calculated some of the values we need. We know the initial velocity, we know the acceleration, okay? And this time though, what we're interested in is uh, how fast it will be going when it hits the ground. So we're interested in its final velocity v, and in fact, I'm gonna rewrite this down here, so we'll put ii. 
So we've got its acceleration is minus or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We have that its initial velocity is 4 meters per second. We're interested in its final velocity, okay? Now time, I don't know, and I don't need to work out, so it only leaves its displacement. So let's think, remember what I said, displacement isn't the total dif distance traveled, so it's not all the way up and then back down. The displacement is only the difference between where it started and where it finished. So if it's one meter above the ground, upwards, when it drops back down, it's gonna be negative one meter, okay, from where it started. So it's gonna be negative one meter. And so now we're looking for a SUVAT equation that has A, U, V, and S. So let's have a look, A, U, V, and S. This one here, A, U, V, and S. So we can use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2 A, S. And so it's just a case of substituting everything in. So we've got U is 4, so 4 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times the displacement, which is negative 1. And so I'm just going to work that out now on my calculator. So we've got 4 squared plus 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1. And so now we get that v squared is equal to 35.6. So now I just need to square root that to get my final answer. And we get that v is going to be equal to 5.97 meters per second if we um, <clears throat> take it to two decimal places. Let's look at the final example question, which is probably maybe the trickiest one, but it's still not really that bad. Okay, it's a lot of writing. It says, bike A travels along a cycle path at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. It passes a point P at time t equals zero. Two seconds later, bike B traveling 50 meters per second moves in the same direction from point at P. Uh, bike B accelerates at a constant uh, one meter per second squared. Show that the two bikes are level at that quadratic equation in terms of t, with t equaling the time. Taken of bike A. Okay, so here's how you do a question like this. You wanna split it up into the two components. So I'm gonna split it up into bike A and then bike B. So we're gonna have bike A over here and I'm gonna write down all the information I know about bike A and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing afterwards but with bike B. So bike A travels at a constant speed, okay? If it says constant speed, that means it's not increasing or decreasing in speed so its acceleration must be zero, okay? So we have the acceleration of bike A is zero its initial velocity is 20 meters per second because it tells me that in the question. And it passes P at T equals zero. Well, okay, I don't wanna write T equals zero, right? Because what we want is an equation in terms of T. And so what I'm actually gonna say is, well, I'm gonna let T equal T, okay? Because I'm gonna end up with an equation with a T in it. So I don't wanna assign any value to T and I don't have any values of T at this point. Uh, final velocity, I don't know yet, I'm not interested in. Okay, displacement, I am interested in because I want to find the point where the displacement of bike A is equal to that of bike B, okay? And so again, not that this is particularly useful, I'm gonna set S equal to S and you'll see why at the end. Bike B, okay, let's see what information we have about it. It's accelerating at a constant rate of one meter per second squared, meters per second squared. And it's traveling with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second meters per second okay now the time I can actually write an equation or an expression in terms of t for the time taken for bike b okay so <clears throat> t is the time taken of bike a so say at the time three seconds okay so three seconds have passed for bike a well if bike b starts two seconds later only one second is going to have passed for bike b and so what I could say is, well, the time of bike B relative to bike A is going to be T subtract two seconds because it's two seconds behind bike A. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, displacement, I don't know. So I'm going to set S equal to S. So from here, what I can actually do is look through, okay, my list of SUVATs for an equation that takes into account S, T, U, and A. And you'll see why in a second. So S, T, U, and A, this one here. Okay, so we're going to be using S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared. And now I'm going to substitute in what I know. Okay, so I've got that S is equal to, well, the initial velocity of A is 20 meters per second times T plus one half AT squared. Well, A is zero, so that goes to zero. So this is the equation I have for bike A, this one here. I'm now going to do the same thing, but for bike B, and we get that S is going to be equal to UT, so 15 multiplied by T minus two. Uh, plus one half times a t squared okay so a is one and t squared is t minus two all squared 
Let's now simplify this and we get 15t minus 30 plus one half multiplied by t squared minus 40 plus four. Okay, I've just expanded that t minus two all squared. Now I'm gonna set these two equations equal to each other, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because they're both equal to s. And if I do that, I can eliminate that s variable and be left with an equation in terms of t. So we've got 20t is equal to 15t minus 30 plus one half t squared minus 40 plus four. And now from here, all I'm gonna do is multiply everything by a half, or by two rather, to get rid of this half there. And so if I multiply everything by two, we get 40t is equal to 30t minus 60 plus t squared minus 40 plus four, okay? So now I'm gonna move everything over to the right-hand side. So we've got zero is equal to t squared, well, minus 10t minus 14t, and we get minus 56 which is not what we needed to show but I think my one is right this one should say minus 56 so hopefully this video is useful uh, if it was like subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials thanks for watching